So Paul Cassily and Mark Tierney were, um, were instrumental in setting up Straw People. They met while they were working at the brilliant Auckland Uni radio station 95BFM, which of course is one of the best stations in the country to this day and has produced so much talent over the years. I mean, too many people to name. And uh, Fiona MacDonald uh, from Headless Chickens also featured in Straw People. Uh, they had lots of, uh, lots of uh, hits, uh, Taller Than God, Trick With A Knife, Beautiful Skin and the one I just played. And we're playing this song because uh, Steve Harrop was also in this band. In fact, uh, you know, pretty st- Steve was probably playing music before he was even born. Uh, a great bass player, and he's offered so much more, quite into his jazz as well, to some of the coolest live acts and recorded music from the 80s right through to today, still active in music. And uh, like he said, 20 years ago, he sort of came back from Europe and, and found this spot in, uh, in near Kurao, which is an interesting little part of the world, right in the heart of the Waitaki Valley, a very, a very different and inspiring and meditative kind of spot, really. Uh, the place is called Otiaki, and I'm sure some of you will, will know this. Anyway, it's, um, it's where Sublime Studios is set up, and he's had some big names uh, turn up and record their music there. A lot of fantastic Kiwi artists. So uh, while I was there this week, I had a wee chat with Steve. I actually caught up with him at the end of, of our session yesterday, and uh, here's what we uh, discussed. So uh, we're here with Steve Harrop from Sublime Recording Studio in the beautiful Waitaki Valley. And Steve, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to be here this past few days recording uh, with with the whole team. But I'm wondering about, you know, I mean, you get some big names here, don't you? You had, uh, you had Reb Fountain recording her album, Iris, here? Yeah, we, we, we love Reb. She's come back. My, my cousin is um, the producer with, with her, Dave Kahn. But um, there's a lot of connections from you know, playing music in the 80s and and being in, in studios. But, um, yeah, dudes like like uh, all the Littleton crew are really making us happy at the moment. We love that stuff. Delaney, well, Davidson? Delaney, I mean, Marlin? hopefully Marlon comes down, but we get, we get um, Adam Hathaway down here a lot and it just it's just a lot of fun. And everyone kind of grooves into the place. Oh, it's got a special feel, and it's kind of funny because you were saying like you've lived all over the world, you know, London and Paris, and you end up here, you know, in a remote valley, really, in the middle of nowhere, with this great recording studio. Well, we we ended up here 20 years ago, which is such a good time to park yourself. Mm. Um, yeah, we parked ourselves in a very lucky place, and it seems to be. Like spiritually, creatively, um, geographically, um, it makes people do things they wouldn't normally do, and which plus, I think is cool. Yeah, I agree. And you know, it's not like you got neighbours breathing down your necks here. No, no. <laughs> I mean, last night was pretty indicative. Uh, I think I heard Tom at about twenty past three putting his last guitar licks down. Mm. And high volume mm. which which is so cool because you know you, you can you can blow as loud as you want and we can record you at that point and if you don't like that we'll back it off but no one's going to say hey go home no that's the thing yeah. and obviously musicians you know they, they work at different hours to normal people and so often they're just coming to life about 11, 12 midnight aren't they some of them Leanne, I'm a musician. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Says it all. Hey, yeah, so, because, I mean, of course, you know, Steve, you know, you are a great musician and you play with, like, straw people and loads of different bands. What are your, what are your best memories of, you know, who oh, you my best, my best memories are when I was really young, you know, like playing those end-on-end gigs in the 80s of when the pub scene was still going, you know. It was, you'd play, you know, a gig at the... At the, um, what do you call it, uh, the Globe, and then you go down the road to somewhere else, and, and then you go and play in a, a, a subterranean club like uh, like um, The Box or Celeb or, or go to the Brits, and, and off you went, you know. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was live all the time. Mm. Now it's, I really respect the, the live players. I try to support um, 
if I can shoot down to Dunedin or Christchurch or Omaru mm. and listen to someone, you must support the the live players. It's so difficult now because everything else can be shunted down the uh, the internet and, and mm. you can listen to it on Bandcamp or Spotify. But live is something else, you know. Um, mm. I, I I think you you don't actually realise how important it is until after it's disappeared and mm. it has disappeared. It's really special to, to get a gig now. Mm. So um, I, I think, you know, there needs to be this kind of push to, to go back to live music. Yeah, I agree. And so, you know, the, the year just keeps rolling on for you. I mean, we've had uh, the boys from the Kilograms here this week and then uh, they'll, we'll head off and, and then you're into the next the next bunch, aren't you? And on oh, it goes, you know? It, yeah, it's, it's almost like a Boy Scout camp or, or a Girl <laughs> Guide camp. Um, I love it. I mean, it, you know, we had, we had um, Jasmine and Mary before you guys and then afterwards we've got Adam Hathaway and... and uh, all his buddies coming down and then there's a whole bunch of of Dunedin guys coming up after that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um it's kind of it's kind of uh, a, a a family affair but it's also a really nice kind of okay we're in the camp we're going to do it and and people become focused. You know, if you feed people good food and you give them great gear to record with mm -hmm. and you, you give them a, a quiet environment, mm. well, there's no kind of pollution there. Um, and there's nothing, no one turning up and there's no distraction to disappear to. No. So we end up getting like quite, um, in my mind, quite... Uh, Quite pivotal kind of um, recordings, recordings. Of, yeah. of people's people's ability because so many people don't really know that it, you know you could do this and not be in a place where in where a big it's city really quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think you're totally right. It, it, you know, you called it sublime, and it is a sublime place. It really is special. Well, it's it, yeah. I I I lived in so many noisy places in the world you know <laughs> yeah. i think london is really quiet i think paris is really noisy yeah. and and but hong kong is out of control yeah. and when you come to back to a place like this and there is no noise human made it's only natural thunder or lightning or cracks or rain or whatever yeah. um yeah it's this is this is the way or the place to record music and yeah we're lucky because We've got vineyards and we've got True. accommodation and yeah. and and all um, musos like to do is drink, piss and <laughs> sleep. <laughs> and sleep and then sing. Yeah. And play. And record. And yeah, have fun. yeah, wake up and go, Oh, I feel Ooh. okay. That's right. Yeah, we'll yeah. It's about it. it's about making people wake up and go, I'm okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll record or I'll play yeah. or I'll create. Um yeah, yeah. I, I I just used to wake up in cities in the world and and end up getting called up for you know like eleven o'clock session in in a in a studio in Paris or a studio in London and mm. and it was just a pain in the ass to get there and oh, oh by the time you got there you're already <laughs> like buggered and you're and not in a good space no, no. and then yeah. and then you. You have to make the record. Yeah. Whereas here, you know, it's a bit more relaxed. It's a bit more... I don't like to say relaxed because I think if you think relaxed, you're not going to be on point. Mm. But everyone comes here and they're on point. I mean, there's mm. the gear's on point, the mm. instruments are on point. We're not standing around waiting waiting for people to, yeah. to you know, muck around. You know, we, 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 we want to hear good noise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's wonderful, and I think congratulations, Steve. It's, oh, it's, cheers. It's such a great uh, studio. Really cool. No, really, 100%, and uh, not to mention the table tennis table, which was just great. But Painted honestly... by my daughter, Cassidy. Yeah, well, listen, actually, let's just do a quick plug for um, your other daughter, who's oh, got Max, a gig uh, Friday night. Yeah, Tell us yeah. about that. Um, she's she's playing with the darts. I, um, I mean, darts are a, are a pretty full-on... North Island band coming down to um, Dunedin. I think it'll. I, I think it's already um, 
sold out on the on the cheap tickets. But right. Um, and where's that? Where's the where they're playing? They're playing it. Stop. Not sure. That's all right. We'll just yeah. we, we don't need to. Not sure. We'll find that out, and I'll um, um, I'll tell the listeners. But so. Oh, did they play in Queenstown recently, these guys? The like they're sort of punk, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. really punky. All right, so that was Steve Harrop, uh, the musician who runs Sublime Recording Studio in Otiaki in the Waitaki Valley.